So when you are a child, you begin to live according to the rules of that house. If you are an adopted child, you begin to learn how the family in which you have been adopted into lives. The principles that they follow. The standards which governize their lives. Now, to be a child, you can be so vulnerable, just like children. So exposed to danger, so exposed to weakness. You can't fight back because life doesn't actually look the way it should be. You need to be protected. You need to be covered. You need to be inspired. You need to be taught how to crawl and how to walk, how to eat solid food. All those things put together. So as a new Christian child who is a baby, who has come to know Jesus Christ for the very first time, number one, you need food. You need food. Just like a newborn baby needs milk many times each day. Not once, not twice, but many times each day the child needs milk. Without food, the child will die. God's written word is the spiritual food for a new Christian. You are to read the word of God daily in order to understand the culture and the principles of God. The laws of God. The authority that God unleashes on his children. You must read the word and think about it every day. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Let your mind be changed, be renewed, be brought into the culture of heaven so that you can have eyes that can see things from God's perspective. The Apostle Peter wrote these words in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tested that the Lord is good. How interesting is that? Begin to rid yourself from all things that have damaged your reputation. Things that make people, don't, they don't see you the way you should. Rid yourself from all deceit, including self-deception. You know, many people... Give a different picture to the, other, to the outside world while they are actually different. You are fake. You have to be real. So the Bible says, when you become a Christian, number one thing, rid yourself of all such hypocrisy and self-deception. Like a newborn baby, sit under someone to instruct you. You know, there are people that I have met in this world who will say, well, I don't belong to any church because I don't need it. I'm a good person. Fine. I love God. And then the, the question, I, the, 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 my statement would be, go and join the heavenly choir. God gave us instructions that we need someone that mentors us. There's no such thing that I want to be, I'm only God's, I'm only God's, and I don't belong anywhere. You are on earth, and you need human leaders to mentor you and to raise you up. Number two, you need fresh air. Oh, I'm breathing good. 
If you stop breathing, you will die. Breathing keeps you alive. You breathe in fresh air to supply your body with oxygen every day and every moment. You breathe out to get rid of poisonous air. Carbon dioxide should be out, bringing oxygen every now and then. Then your life, your body is renewed every, every moment. So for the Christian, prayer is like breathing. Breathing in. And confessing your sins is breathing out. So when you breathe in with prayer, and you say, God, save me and help me. Make my heart clean, O oh God. And then you take out all malice, all sin, all evil thoughts out of your life. Then God fills your soul with his spirit and his love. At this point, how do you do this? You need to make strong the fellowship of believers. Be part of people that can help you. Iron sharpens iron. So one person should sharpen the other, the Bible says. You must make a daily practice to do this process of nurturing your soul so that you can be accredited a person worthy of God's love and God's growth. Number three, you need warmth. A child needs to be covered when it's cold. In Newfoundland, where I live, it's extremely cold. It's in the minus. When I was just a couple of weeks, as we were doing all these winter storms, so much snow piling up. Living in the cold. Now, you can imagine a child that has been put in the cold. They would die instantly. So it's no good leaving a baby outside the cold and rain. You must keep warm as a young Christian. By this, I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about when you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, even today, you might be 90 years, you might be 80 years, you might be 50 years. I mean you are an infant in the faith. You will need to learn and enter the culture and experience the message of the grace of God. You need help. You need encouragement by other Christians. Share with fellow Christians as often as you can. Give a testimony about how life should be in the faith. Confess your sins with one another. First John chapter 1 verse 8 to 9. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So during those moments we are confessing with each other, we are helping each other, we are trying to grow up in the faith. The author of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 to 25, he actually says, And let us consider 